The meeting to order, would you please join me in a pledge of the flag, then remain standing for a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Please keep in your thoughts this evening. Representative uh, Frank Moran, a graduate of the school, lost his father last week, and also uh, the men and women protecting us around the world. Thank you very much. When you have a moment, could you call the roll for the purpose of attendance? Ms. Fitzgerald? Yes. Ms. Disla? Present. Mr. Hatem? Yes. Mr. Cirillo? Here. Ms. Marmel? Present. Mr. Tarbox? Here. Mr. Lamontagne? Here. Okay, uh, minutes from uh, March uh, 20, we have two sets of minutes here. I don't know if you got the others that are in front of you. Do the March 28th minutes, can I have a motion on those please? So moved. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay, the April 3rd, special meeting of April 3rd, the minutes of April 3rd, can I have a motion on those please? Right. You said you put them out there, you, you have them? Well, it's there. Right there. They're in the book. Mm -hmm. It's right after the other minute. Okay. okay. I have a motion on uh, minutes of April 3rd, please. So moved. Discussion? All those in favor? Abstain. All those opposed? Could you uh, call the roll when you have a moment, please? Ms. Marmel? Abstain. Mr. Tarbox? The minutes of April 3rd, the special meeting that we had last Tuesday, uh, last Monday. Yeah. Sorry. Ms. Fitzgerald? Yes. Ms. Disla? Yes. Mr. Hatem? Yes. Mr. Cirillo? Abstain. Mr. LaMontagne? Yes. Okay, uh, Mr. DeStefano, could we get a cash balance report, please? Cash balance report as of April 4th, 2023. The account balance on March 21st, 2023 was 851,707.15. We had deposits from March 22nd to April 4th of 3,308,948.74. Less payroll on March 23rd of 1179.84. Payroll on March 30th of 1,010,852.56. Less warrant number 36 on March 20 on uh, March 22nd of $64,062. And warrant number 37 on March 29th of 1,340,982.40. Leaves us with a book balance on April 4th of 1,743,579.09 and a corresponding bank balance on the same day of 3,423,430.27. In our MMDT account, the account balance on March 21st was 11,331,372 spot 43. Year to date interest was 206,796,01. Um, leaving us with a balance of eleven million five thirty eight one sixty eight forty four and interest for March of forty six thousand eight ninety four sixty five um, leaves us with an MMDT balance on April fourth of eleven million five eighty five oh sixty three oh nine and a total operating cash balance on the same day. Of thirteen million three twenty eight six forty two eighteen. Could you appreciate a motion, please? So moved. Have a second. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> consolidated cash reconciliation report. There was a handout. Revolving funds in the packet. Budget reports in the packet. Questions on those, Mrs. Uh, Fitzgerald? 
I had a question on one of the warrant articles. It was PO number 13189, made payable to Communications Incorporated, and I looked and I saw what it was for, for the marketing web design, but for some reason I thought we were going to tie that in with our new marketing approach. Um, I know that our, uh, both the superintendent and our principal spoke about putting together a committee, so I didn't know if we were putting the cart before the horse or whether we were gonna come up with an overall plan that would include our new web design. And so that $10,000 warrant article was for the company that has been hired, I guess, to do the web design. But I, my question is, are they already on board or are they gonna wait to get input from all of us of how we wanna go forward? So I know that that um, New England School Public Association that um, our principal had talked about, I didn't know how this was all gonna tie in. I just don't want us to go okay, we'll do this here and then we'll do this here because then we're going to be right back at square one and at our meeting two weeks ago, we decided that we wanted a solid approach. So I'll take any feedback. I have no problem with hiring this firm, but I don't want them to jump in without some input here. Thank you. Superintendent, yeah, your microphone jump, please. So our principal has been leading this. Effort. Our principal has been leading this effort in terms of uh, working on our website. Has been somewhat look <coughs> has been involved in it since the beginning of the school year. But step one was certainly to hire a, uh, a consulting firm to work with us, and so there was a committee put together to do the work to determine who that might be that she's overseen. And uh, I can let Susan explain a little more to you also. But anyways. It was on their recommendation and the work that they had done that this committee was selected. There is a committee that is working to develop and move forward on our website. There's also been a lot of research work that's already been done, a lot of work behind the scenes by people on the committee, and uh, this committee will be continuing to work to move forward to uh, complete this task of uh, our uh, new web design. But I'll let Susan, if Susan wants to explain a little bit more, she can talk to you a little bit more about, because she's been deeply involved in uh, this effort. Thank you. That's what say. Yeah, I can just share that Communications Inc., um, we looked at several different web design companies. We also looked at trying to design something in-house, and we did choose Communications Inc. Um, in terms of um, who we decided to go with to design our new website. That is just one part. The first thing that we did was um, phase one. Uh, they came in and with a small group, they did a visioning activity um, with a small group of representatives in terms of people from technology in different areas of the building that um, we could give input in terms of like what they wanna see in our website, what's missing. Um, that's phase one. So what they're gonna do is in um, two to three weeks, we expect to get back from them what they call like a framing, which they're going to come back and say, um, from what you gave, the information you gave us, from what we've looked at your website, from what we know, from what works in terms of websites, um, they're gonna give us a framing, a recommended framing. And then we're lucky enough to have people internally that are working on um, developing the content. Eleanor Stafford, who's um, with us this year, she's working with multiple departments to kind of curate the content. So, you know, we have different departments and they know what they need. Um, so we also have um, Cassandra working on um, what type of, you know, how we want to represent in, in terms of photo stock, stock photos of all of our things. After that, um, once we get that, the next phase would be to get what they call testers or more input. So they want different users, they want parents, they want community members. Um, we can certainly have representatives from this team. They want to have different users to kind of test out to see what the experience would look like. Um, that in terms of the website, this company, it's called Communications Inc. We did not hire them as part of our overall communications plan. That just happens to be the name of their company. That's the co they do a lot of communications, they do strategy, but we're starting with them specifically on our website. Any other questions? 
Okay, fiscal year uh, FY24 budget, uh, Ms. Martell is going to pre uh, present it, and uh, the administration is looking for us to vote on it this evening. Ms. Martell? So I'm not presenting the budget, but um, at the last meeting I handed out the fiscal year 24 budget book, and hopefully you all had a chance to review it. Um, I didn't get any feedback, so I'm hoping everything looks okay in here. Um, there was one addition that we made after I presented the budget, um, but it did go into the budget book, and that is what you'll be voting on tonight. So um, last year we earmarked a million dollars for the paving project, and then when we got the quotes in, they came in almost um, at double what we had earmarked for it. <laughs> so we decided to put the project on hold and wait for the cost of petroleum to come down, and we've decided to put that back out to bid this probably this spring. Um, and we'd like to earmark five, another 500000 for that project, so it'll be 1.5 earmarked to do the paving. But I just need you all to vote on the, using the 500000 of E&D. And if you look in your packet, I've included, um, this is a page straight out of the budget book, yes. the revenue page, and you'll see on there the E&D at the 500000 Yep. So we'll be voting to use that. And then I just included with that just the backup. We had our E&D certified, which allows us to earmark that money. Um, so our, our E&D came in at $875,416, and we'll be using 500000 of that. Okay, Superintendent, that's your recommendation? Yes. Okay. Have a motion on the uh, recommendation from Ms. Martel and the superintendent, please. Second. Discussion? Yes. Uh, uh, Zoila? Your, your microphone, please. I'm just kidding. <laughs> By the way, I love your hair. <laughs> so this is just extra. That's one comment. And the other comment is it doesn't say that in the agenda that we were going to be approving this. So I need, I'm just looking to know that why it doesn't say that. And now we are being told right now that we need to approve. So in order to in order to use the E&D funding, you have to approve it. Um, it was in the budget book, but I just wanted everybody. Yeah, yes, you are. We're we're approving the use of the E&D revenue. I think so. This question was um, right. The question was that it was not uh, on the uh, on the agenda as a formal no, formal to, no, approve. to approve it. Did, when when did it come in? Was it one of those last minute items? I, I don't know. No, I meant the addition to the extra 500000 So we had it. We, we had talked about it. We included it. In we the need budget a microphone. Mm. We included it in the budget book, but before I release this to the cities and towns, I want to make sure that the district committee approves the 500000 Okay. Superintendent? So we're, you're only voting on the 500000 additional, uh, to take out that additional 500000 out of E&D which we've shown in the book that we were going to need to do that. So, but we still need you to vote to take money from E&D and put it in the budget. We haven't done that yet. So that's all you're voting on, giving us permission to do that. And then we can send out our books because it has, uh, we followed all the uh, protocols and procedures and policies to make that happen. So it's just a vote we need on the 500,000. Yeah, one second. One second. Be right with you. <coughs> All said, Zoila? No. No, um, Zoila had the floor at the moment. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, uh, my question was no answer. So I understand we do need to approve, but if we already knew that ahead of time, not last minute, which you already confirmed that, why it wasn't part of the agenda? Because that's what we do. It needs to be part of the agenda to do approvals. Correct? No, things can be added to the things can be added to the agenda. They can be, you know. Mm -hmm. 
Right here. You all set at the moment? Okay. Uh, wait, no, Frank had, uh, Frank? It would need to be a last minute vote onto the agenda at this point uh, to, before we could actually vote on it. Okay, well, we can do that. Yes, uh, Superintendent, your mic, please. Oops. I mean, it is on the agenda. If you see, if you look at the agenda, it says, or maybe it's not on yours. It's on maybe it's just on mine. Oh, okay, so it's just on my agenda. All right. Um, it does say an update on fiscal 24 budget, and that is this is the update. The, right. Mm -hmm. uh, the vote, the vote to mm -hmm. vote on that addition. That's our update on the, on this particular our 24 budget. So where it says update on fiscal 24 budget, um, the update is that we need to get a vote of 500,000 to add that to our budget in order for us to uh, move forward right. uh, with pro providing our communities that booklet. Vivian? So what I think uh, Committee Member Zoila Disla is trying to say is we could see the agenda ahead of time, obviously, and we're able to see in every item that we have in the agenda, certain things are just up for discussion, and then there's certain things where mm -hmm. it is, there's a recommendation uh, to that motion mm -hmm. where it would require a vote. So I believe her question is why, if, if we knew ahead of time um, that it's not indicating on the agenda itself that there was going to be a, a motion for approval on this specific line item. Um, in addition to why this wasn't attached to the agenda as well, because um, we just received it today. Um, but I do have a question that I would like to add. The 500,000, do you mind? I'm not sure if I uh, understood or if I heard. Where would those $500,000 be dispersed to? Hot top. Hot top. What was that? Hot top. The oh, the paving, top. paving. Yeah, the sorry, that. sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. The paving. Hot top. Okay, all set. Oh yeah. Yeah, uh, Mrs. Fitzgerald. Yes. While we're discussing this, um, do we know yet, and do we need a vote for where it would go? The other um, three hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars from the E and D. Do we you know? just leave it there? It doesn't have to burn a hole okay. in your pocket. So we can just we can throw it in and have it earn some interest. I like yes. that. Yeah. Do I have a I, on the approval of that five hundred thousand? Did I have a, a motion and a second on that? I, you. I did. All right. Who can I? Who was it? Who moved? Who did the second? Okay. Can you move. Uh, remove your uh, motion. Remove it. I will remove my motion to um, actually. I will amend my motion to um, to add in the approval of the five hundred thousand um, as an agenda item. Right. That's what I wanted to do first. We're going to do two motions. Do two motions. Okay. You all right? Moving your second. Okay. So you make a motion to put it on the agenda. Correct. Okay. Good. You have a second. Going once. Going twice. Now. Uh, all those in favor. Aye. Any would oppose? I have a motion to approve the uh, the um, remove not the removal. Excuse me, the moving of uh, five hundred thousand dollars from the ED account to uh, to be earmarked for uh, hot top or whatever you want to call it. Do I have a motion on that, please. I'll make a motion for discussion. Second. Second. Um, Frank. Um, and mind me if I'm wrong. I could be wrong. Um, aren't we supposed to approve the E and D after it's certified? Are we supposed to mm -hmm. approve this E and D um, after we're the supposed certification? To get it, we're supposed to get it certified. I don't know right. if we 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 really or maybe accept. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Maybe accept it, but we can't approve it because we don't really know the number. You know what I'm saying? Right. We don't know the numbers. We can maybe accept what was given to us. Well, you this know, will be the final number because it's been certified. So correct? the E and D has been certified. Right. We have to get a vote. Of approval to be able to use it. Okay, to use it. Right. Yeah. Right. No. It is what it is. It's no. We have right. no impact on the change it or not change it or accept and it. I wouldn't or not know what we're looking it. at anyway. Right. To be right. 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 Yeah. No. Right. Not typically. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. You all set with your motion? Yeah. Okay. You all set. Whoever seconded is all set. Anything further? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? 
Okay, uh, donations, I see none, no articles, public participation, I don't see any. Okay, the superintendent will explain why or why not GLTS should go to school choice. John? So every year we have to inform the Department of Education, the DSE, uh, whether we're going to be a school choice school moving forward for fiscal school year 23-24, uh, and that uh, at this time of year the committee needs to vote on either uh, allowing us to take on school choice students or not to and given the fact that we're turning down over a thousand students each year uh, I would recommend that we do not go to school choice but Sup that school committee needs to vote on it S superintendent has a recommendation of uh, GLTS not accepting school choice students I have a motion on that please so move. Second. discussion no did you have Oh, you faked me out. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay, thank you very much. School calendar is in your packet. I need a motion on to accept that, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Discussion? Yes, Mrs. Fitzgerald? I want to compliment the principal for having this out in such a timely fashion. It has been years and years since I've seen such an early calendar. Thank you very much. Anything further? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Co-op report in your packet. Questions on that document? In your calendar also, a May, cal I'm in your calendar, I'm sorry, in your packet, May calendar, anything on that document? Excuse me? No, go ahead, do you have a question? No, I didn't see, I saw calendar and I didn't realize we had a May calendar. Okay, uh, Spring Advisory Board, Superintendent will update the committee on the Spring Advisory Board meeting uh, Thursday, April 13th. So. So April 13th, uh, we will be uh, hosting our advisory committee here at the school. This is our second uh, committee meeting, advisory board meeting of the year. It happens at this time every year. Uh, it's to, uh, for them to again um, review our, our, our budget again, look at curriculum, and it's important at this time for them to review curriculum as we're going to be going into our uh, curriculum development season, particularly during the summer where we make adaptations and changes. So it's important to hear from our committees to take a close look at our, our uh, the frameworks and our curriculum, our lessons and our projects, uh, make any recommendations they feel would enhance or improve uh, the, uh, the work of our instruction of our in, uh, teachers and the, the work in uh, knowledge and skills our students will be receiving, uh, particularly this upcoming, next coming school year. Uh, and uh, this year, also at this particular meeting, they will be giving us some more feedback on the strategic plan. I will present to them in the, in, uh, to start the meeting off in the, in the pack to talk a little about uh, some of their, uh, first to thank them for their service, and then uh, to then also talk a little bit about the strategic plan and the how important it is to get their feedback to, to kind of analyze and look at the particular industry so they'll go through activities to kind of look at where their industry is today and where they think it might go five years from now to make recommendations to us to ensure that uh, we're including that in our five-year strategic plan so their feedback is critical uh, in that work and uh, that happens this Thursday uh, two days from tonight questions for the superintendent yeah Zola. Is this the one related to when they do recommendations for the different the different shops, or is this related to panels, or is both? This is related to the individual shops have individual meetings with the people from industry from their particular uh, yeah. industries. Yep. What day is that? Thursday. This coming Thursday. And we are, we are, we are allowed no. to be here, right? Is that why you're giving us uh, I'm informing, typically uh, school committee members don't go to these meetings, but 
if you have an interest on a particular meeting, um, they're open meetings, so feel free to go. It would be here at the school. Uh, different rooms for different uh, programs. So, like, if you're interested in, let's say, uh, carpentry, you go down to the carpentry shop. So, go to the shops of whatever programs you would be interested in hearing more about their recommendations and the conversations that go on. Frank, is the aviation going to have a, an advisory board? They do have an advisory board, and we had a meeting with them about, f I believe, four weeks ago. So, you know, I'm not sure if they're holding a, another meeting this coming. I can let you know tomorrow. Uh, I'm not sure on aviation whether they're holding another meeting since they had it four weeks ago. What about the program meeting each Same thing with each of those. They all had to have meetings prior to our uh, submission of the uh, Part B of our application. So I'm not sure if they're reconvening this time around. But I can get back to you with an e to all the committee members with an email to let you know. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Sure, Zara. One more question. I know. So the reason why I asked because I remember we used. I mean, I know I came at least at one meeting where parents were involved. Remember we were going into this chapter seventy four and all that, and there was advisory committee with. I don't know if it's called advisory committee, but it was with parents. Oh, with, um, parents. with parents yes uh, yeah, absolutely I, I, I yeah I it. don't think it was advisory meeting although there are parents on there is one parent typically there's at least one parent and a student on every advisory committee but not typically groups of parents but each committee is required to have a parent on their committee so uh, but not you might have been in a, a parent or one of our parent connection meetings that we have uh -oh. So, so we have um, we have the um, we have the English Learner Parent Advisory Council. We also have the Special Education Parent Advisory Council. Those are both parent groups. Um, in, in addition, we have a um, newly kind of it used to be called the Parent Connection, but we have the um, Family Engagement Group, and they do have an event in May, and it's all around May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and it's going to be all around um, support it's different various m mental health issues. All of our social workers are getting together to create and develop that um, those programs, and we'll have a parent night. It is in May on the calendar. Do you mind repeating the name of those? Sure. Um, so three, the first one is the English Learner Parent Advisory Council, and they have quarterly meetings. We also have a Special Education Parent Advisory Council, and then we have our Family Engagement Group. It used to be called the Parent Connection, and that's run out of our discipline area. And they, we, we've had several events, and the, the, fil the final one this school year for families and caregivers is in May, and it's all around mental health awareness. That helps. Mrs. Fitzgerald? Yes, I was thinking maybe I could just clarify the advisory group that's happening next week versus the general meeting that we all tend to attend where we're discussing um, budgets and their requests, and we have to decide if in the end we can put it in versus the one that's happening next week with each of is more. This week. This week, sorry, is more um, curriculum based because we want to make sure that we are providing the curriculum that's needed out there in the work world so it's more individualized for the people on the advisory committee making recommendations of what's going out on out there in the world and that's why we don't usually um, attend those but that was just for clarification. Thank you. Anything further? Okay. Um, DESE uh, student discipline, John? So the um, Department of Education, DSE, uh, has got, has uh, submitted to all uh, schools new guidance and update expectations for schools and district <laughs> leaders relative to student discipline <coughs> and I'll, you have it in your packet the, the new uh, guidelines but I'll just kind of highlight a, a little bit of what's in there uh, one of the uh, real 
uh, I think, issues that they're trying to address and concerns is the, they want to see um, less long-term suspensions and uh, expulsions of students. Uh, they, and before we expel students or before we have long-term suspension, the Department of Ed and the law is really requiring us to look at alternative remedies uh, and documenting those alternative re remedies to long-term suspension. So they want us to look at different ways to deal with the issues so that we can keep students in the classroom and keep them learning. So the whole focus of this uh, new um, guideline is to try to uh, ensure that students continue to learn regardless um, as opposed to pulling them out of classrooms uh, with suspensions but ensuring that we've done every other alternative method of dealing with the problem uh, before we first go quickly to uh, suspensions um, you know one of the things that we always tell teachers particularly our new teachers when we have them in for um, our uh, our uh, beginning of the school year uh, program, um, we always talk about uh, that discipline's an opportunity for them to build relationships. And so it's how you deal with those uh, behaviors and how you deal with the issues is so important. So uh, what they're also suggesting is that we have a better, do a little more research on why students are behaving the way they are uh, so that we have some uh, understanding of how we can deal with the problem in a different way. And some other suggestions of uh, just to give you some examples uh, some of their suggestions is to look at mediation uh, conflict resolutions uh, restorative justice programs and uh, looking at collaborative problem solving so having uh, various stakeholders who are care about that student both from the academic I mean from the school's perspectives as, as well as from the family perspectives to kind of look at what's really going on with the student and how we can deal with the problem in different ways before we uh, first go to a suspension. One of the, uh, in terms of ex uh, expelling students, there are a couple things that are uh, probably justified in expulsions is uh, uh, the use of uh, weapons in school or bringing weapons to school uh, and, um, and bringing uh, uh, drugs to school are two areas that they consider as serious events, uh, offenses that you might consider expulsions. But uh, when once you expel a student, you also have a responsibility to help determine uh, alternative education for that student that's being expelled. So that's just kind of a highlight of what this uh, new guideline uh, addresses. And so they're really looking for schools to uh, continue to um, better find other solutions than to immediate uh, uh, pulling of students out of the, out of the classroom. So um, engaging students in different ways to help improve the, uh, their behavior uh, and showing them that um, we're not all, all about just immediately punishing students or trying to uh, impact their learning. But so uh, I think it's a really good guidelines. I, I really like the approach that the DSC is looking at us to work with and do. I think it all makes sense. So in reality, what it says is students, whether they're our best students or whether they're our most difficult students, they're still our students and we still have a responsibility to try to educate those students. Yep. Mr. Sorolla? <clears throat> uh, this is not really new. This has been around for a year or two. And I've known of other districts that it's been a miserable failure. Um, the, un the unfortunate part is it is a direct mandate that's coming from the from DESI. Um, but I think we here in this school, we've done this better than other this school districts without having these guidelines in place. Um, so I will agree with the superintendent. It, it, it's there. Every student that walks in through that door is our student. And we have to find a way of making sure that they're educated and find out how we could better help serve their needs. Principal Zulinski? 
I just wanted to add on to what the superintendent um, was explaining and share just a minute on how we've been addressing it this year. Um, I believe the law was enacted, but very it was this year. So it's taken a while for people to respond. One of the things that we'll see is we've had to add, lang we're adding language into our student handbook to address it. Um, but what we're doing in our discipline department is we've teamed up and partnered with the social work uh, adjustment counselor staff. We have a, a and a social worker of the day kind of so that's really a different approach for us so if there's an issue where uh, perhaps there's a student that maybe there's a fight uh, a disagreement sometimes it's worse if it's uh, something else um, the discipline uh, staff will consult and call down our social worker and then they're able to kind of help kind of problem solve and sometimes even discuss with the student we're monitoring that and tracking kind of what they're seeing in the discipline department and how partnering with uh, social workers have made an impact. Um, and a few of the things that we have done um, typically, um, you know, sometimes if it's a, a fight, a, a really bad fight, you know, sometimes it is something where you have to send students out of the building. But we have had real success this year with keeping students in the building. Um, partnering with them because they're able to to step in and help us mediate that and keep kids in school um, so again we are monitoring that because we have to we, we want to kind of see what incidents that we have and what our responses is and what we can kind of take as permanent solutions in that to change Vivian um, Superintendent or Principal Selinski, do you mind going into what are the current methods that we are using? Um, and uh, the second part to that question is, if we're, if this is something um, that we're in the beginning stages of uh, adapting, what what is the process of creating these methods? Are we creating a subcommittee? Are we hiring someone um, with a, either an educational or a clinic? clinical background to provide what the proper methods are? are? Are we involving parents to partake into uh, being part of the decision-making process as to what these methods will be? Who wants to take it? Sue? Go ahead, Sue. Sue? So as I mentioned, this is kind of like the data collection. We're kind of seeing what we have. I would say um, some of the things that are definitely coming out of it is more mediation. So we're doing more um, peer mediation. We're doing more guided, facilitated mediations. We're also looking at some, um, identifying some additional education that we can do proactively with all students um, at the beginning of the year, whether it's about bullying or harassment, uh, depending on what we're seeing. Um, we're also, uh, we are using our current staff, and um, I believe that if we do need to reach out, we will to get additional staff, but we're using our current clinical staff to kind of look at that. And I will also say that parents are always involved. Um, so in there's some senses like we would be calling a parent to have their child picked up because they're being suspended, mm -hmm. but parents are still notified that there's an issue and we're letting them know kind of what our resolution is. That's it. Uh, Frank? Uh, thank you. Uh, I remember, I don't know if it was last year before we talked about changing the word discipline from the um, from the team because you know words do have a either a positive or negative effect and the word ne discipline um, does provide a very negative effect. I don't think we've talked about that before. We just never. I just brought, it just popped back into my head today as we we're reading it. Um, are we still looking into changing that? We are, and sometimes even I say discipline now. So it's going to be part of our rollout of our student and faculty handbook, and the new name is going to be Safe Student and Family Engagement, because that's really what we're trying to do is engage students and families in order to support students. And I think it goes well for what the whole team does. That's it. John? So uh, given what uh, the principal has spoken about and some of what you just heard, it, you know, it all comes down to uh, when you talk about engagement, it's conversation, it's communication, and it's trying to get uh, students, particularly when they're engaged in conflict between each other, to better understand each other's views and to, to listen and, and to hear and to communicate. So really getting down to those basics and helping kids understand 
the value of that uh, when they're feeling angry or when they're uh, w ready to respond in a, in a behavior that just isn't appropriate. So helping them also deal with um, understanding what's going on with themselves at the moment is all part of the work that we're trying to do. And I have to say the work that um, the discipline office um, and the work of our uh, guidance department has been much closely uh, connected this year uh, with our uh, with our therapists and our social workers uh, trying to work this all out and we are so fortunate that we have some pretty outstanding people that are connected to this work that is making a big difference with our students so um, uh, if you if you ever saw them in action you would be pretty amazed at how effective they are so it's been working great anything further uh, uh, Zoila thank you both for the explanation and bringing this up now this talk about conflict physical conflict people uh, kids that you know have a problem with another person um, and I wanted to know more I don't know if this is a response to what I asked for. I'm not sure. Is it? It's. Uh, oh, it's just part of. Yeah, this is. Uh, this actually, um, I would not say it's a response to it's what not? you asked oh, okay. for, but okay. it addresses some of the questions that you asked about. I don't think because it's direct. I, we talk very specific to academic, to academic failure, rather than. A, person, a, a student having a fight with another and how that is being addressed. So, yeah, I mean, thank you for this, but uh, I mean, it doesn't, at least it doesn't answer my question completely, yeah. okay? Um, so in terms of this, I hope that all, everything that's been done is being documented as well. Because that's a big part of, you know, if anything needs to be medi mediated, that documentation is in place and in order. That it is, it is being documented. It's a requirement of the guidelines that we document our uh, different processes and alternative methods. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sorry, uh, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about if that if it's if it's an incident that happens that the, the, that that incident. I'm just talking particularly the to an incident that is being dealt with, not okay. the process. Yeah. I understand the process is being documented. I'm talking about the resolution. Resolutions of a specific issues within individuals. You, you understand what I mean? Yes. Yes. And that that also needs is needs to be documented and is documented as well. Yep. So I, I would just ask that if you could articulate the specific question that maybe I didn't clearly understand it, that I can get you the right answer. Sure. Um so we were discussing specifically um, students that have, you know, that don't do their, their schoolwork, that are being given the help that they need to be able, you know, to, um, to get the work done and get that grade up, and they still don't get there because they refuse to, they don't want to do the work, they don't want to be here, they don't, want, they don't want to even though the school is providing all the help that they need. Yeah. So that's what I'm talking about. So specific to that, I don't think, um, I think we've been dealing with that forever, you know, through different methods and different ways, which includes some of the conversation we just had. But we are, we also have right now a grading committee that's looking at grading, uh, great new grading policies and new ways of working with students who are failing and refusing to do the work. And how do we, how do we uh, uh, adapt our uh, communication and work with those students to help them uh, get engaged in the work and uh, is our grading policies having an impact on those particular kinds of students that you're talking about so we're looking at that so how can we change the things that we're doing in terms of grading 
that may have an impact in what do we do with students that are uh, not engaging in a refusing, continuing to refuse to engage. Um, and it really starts with understanding what the real issue and problem is so that we can, once we know that, then we know how to work with them better. And that's also part of the work. Our social workers are doing uh, an enormous amount of work around that in itself. So I think our biggest attempt at helping those students who are falling in the cracks, the, specifically the ones that you're talking about, are ones that we have many of our social workers spending many hours meeting and working with those particular students to try to, to change uh, their trajectory uh, here at the school and, and help them uh, overcome <coughs> what are the issues that are causing you. what exactly what you're talking about. But we're also looking at what kind of responsibilities we have as educators day to day in the classroom that may have an impact on some of that motivation and some of that uh, uh, lack of desire, I should say, to, to uh, perform. Uh, Frank? Frank? Oh, Vivian? Oh, Frank? And section, page six, section five talks about positive um, engagement and re-engagement of students, especially those who are having issues with, with learning. But we, <laughs> They are our students. We have to figure out how to engage them, figure out what is the issues that they're not engaging because it could be from anything, from mental health, trauma, um, homelessness. And that, there's a lot of things that a student will not engage. Um, and it's looking at what those those barriers are in order to help engage this, re engage the students. Okay, anything further on this matter? No, no, no. Is there anything further, though, before we move on? Superintendent, uh, floor plan for the new programs? Okay, so I, I uh, have a floor plan of the, have a floor plan of the uh, lower section of the school because most of the changes that are happening and uh, now we're addressing some of the needs for more classroom but, space and job space. Well, there's nothing you can do. He, he wants to show. Uh, down in the construction area, uh, I would say 90% of the changes that addressing for the immediate uh, future, which is next school year, and some of this, the remainder of this school year, because we're uh, going to be making some changes as well uh, very soon. Uh, but I will uh, point out where we're making uh, room for the expansion of adding uh, more students in the freshman year next year and the impact of that on space. So if you look at, if you look at the uh, this particular drawing or this print, you can see that it's um, all construction trades down there. So, but we do have, I don't think we have any academic classrooms down there right now, do we? No, we don't have any academic classrooms, but we'll soon be moving some academic classes down there next year. So, uh, let me start off by, if you look at, if you've been down there before, oh, thank you. probably the easiest space to uh, identify with is this space here, which is what I'm calling the cafeteria. Right now, that's the landscape horticulture shop, which we're going to be converting that to the cafeteria. So because we're taking in so many students, we need more, more new, more cafeteria space. And so in order to address that, we're going to take this space and convert this into a cafeteria. The reason for it being that space, number one, it's, it's a large open space. And uh, it's the least costly of any of our spaces to convert to a cafeteria. It's within a uh, uh, reasonable amount of money. And, and it's a space that we'll be able to do most of the work between uh, May. We're actually going to be looking at we have a lot of equipment, in fact, from when we close the uh, Reggie Cafe that we can utilize, and also some of where we, when we close the um, space where we had the uh, elderly uh, luncheon uh, preparation there, which we turned into a freshman culinary space. We also have some equipment left in there that we'll be able to utilize in the cafeteria, and then we'll have to buy some equipment as well also, but it's going to be a reasonable cost, but this will address uh, the increase of student population and the, uh, the pressure puts on the existing cafeteria now and overcrowding of the existing cafeteria. Then uh, in terms of because we're bringing in aviation, the freshman aviation program 
Uh, next year will be in this space here, which uh, right now is the 12th grade, 11th, 12th grade carpentry shop. And uh, so we'll be taking, we'll be there. In fact, they've already, it's already been converted. It's already been cleaned out. All the equipment's out of it. Carpentry is totally out of it. And they've moved into this space down here where you see carpentry 11 and 12, which originally all of this space was carpentry 10. And most of this space here was lumber storage. So we're taking all the lumber that was in here and a lot of the scrap material. And it's a pretty large space. Any, uh, it's as, as large, pretty much almost the same space that they had previously. And we're, we've moved all that lumber into the, our garages that are out by the field. We have about seven garages over there. We've taken three of those garages that have equip, mostly athletic equipment. We moved them into their new two-stall garage space out by the field, which is more convenient for them. We did that last week. So three garage spaces are open now. So all this lumber, we've already started moving that into, the, into those garages. So that clears the out. This is pretty close. There's still some lumber in there that we won't move to the end of the year. Uh, but we're also looking at some lumber trees just outside of the, outside of the um, shop, which are basically uh, racks that you put lumber on, so, um, which will fence in that area. So any lumber that they need to be close by the shop. Here's the thing with the 11th and 12th grade students. 11th and 12th grade carpentry students are rarely in their shop. Usually they gather there in the morning and then they head off to outside projects. So, uh, so next year we have a house building program. So they'll spend pretty much no time in this space at all, even though that, that will be their home. Uh, this year they've, been ver they've spent very little space and time in this space um, because they've been doing projects all around the school. If you look out where the garages are, you'll see we've taken and uh, are taking the roof off three of the garages so far and expanding them so we can have more space. We're putting full uh, doors. Uh, a frame dormers in the front of the garages with doors that we can take a fork truck and move stuff in. So mm -hmm. we're in desperate need of all kinds of space, so we're going to be able to store more up there. We've added some, we're adding lighting up there. And so now we've doubled the space of the garage by having that second floor with the full shed dormer on the back side that the kids are working on. So uh, the carpentry students and the electrical students are doing. They're about halfway through that project. By the end of the year, you may have one or two stalls left to do, but we'll be pretty close to there. Excuse um, me, John, for a second. Mrs. Fitzgerald, do you have a question? Sorry, excuse me, John. Yes, as I came in to today, I actually drove around and I saw what you're talking about, and that was going to be one of my questions. So are you planning on doing those, like, dormers on each one of the garages or just the three that are already? No, all, all, all six of them. I think there's six of them. Wow, that'll yeah, really yes. give more storage space. Yes, yeah, but it'll, it'll double the storage space we have now in the lower garage. We now have that same space on the second floor. Thank and you. The reason we're putting eight dormers on the front with a, garage, with a swinging door is so that we can bring stuff up. And we did order a new fork truck about seven months ago that can reach and it's heavy duty to, uh, so that we could utilize this space better uh, as well as with the barn. We can utilize the second floor for storage space also. It's about two months late, so we got as soon as that comes in, we're hoping it comes in soon, but it's going to provide us uh, with the, uh, equip the tool that we need in order to utilize that space effectively and efficiently. So, and we've done, so just the two garage spaces down on the field that are brand new that we opened up this year, we put shelving all around those space so it makes it easy for the uh, athletic department to keep their equi equipment organized and, and uh, inventory so they don't lose stuff. So we try to do a really good job of making it uh, more efficient for them and easier for them to store their stuff. So as we do these different projects, we're trying to find the best way to maintain because we are uh, looking towards uh, improving the work that we do around inventory and that kind of work. Uh, so that's part of what we, why we changed uh, the uh, position in, uh, in the maintenance department 
storage and equipment space that makes that pro makes that more feasible and more doable for all programs that we're going to be implementing some new changes in policies that will be bringing forward to the committee around inventory, all of our equipment, our tools, our books, everything in the school, including technology. So uh, that's one of our uh, goals for our, um, um, our school. John, uh, Mrs. Fitzgerald has a follow-up question. Sure. Yes, it, it's not about the garages, which I was very impressed when I saw them today. But on your, when you were talking here about carpentry already going in there, right to the outside there you have classroom and the number five. What was in that room before it's now going to be a classroom? What was there? Okay, so that particular classroom um, uh, was for the electrical low voltage. And so what we've done now, uh, because electric low voltage wanted to be incorporated more with the regular electrical program, in other words, they want to be recognized as electrical students, but their, their curriculum basically has about a year and a half of low voltage, but then the other two years of their program is full-blown regular electrical curriculum. So now they're in the phase of the curriculum, they're going into their third year next year where they're going to be more connected to the work that they do in the regular electrical program. So we've actually, we've moved them across the hall here, which <coughs> is adjacent to electrical, and we opened up, we opened up a part of the wall. This shows more than, than we did actually open the wall, actually comes to here, the opening's over here. But there was a request from both the students and the instructor that they wanted to be closer and more connected to the actual electrical department. So that's why we moved them across here and uh, the kids were very excited about that, and all the teachers were also excited about that because they feel it uh, makes them a stronger department. We can cross-train kids also. Uh, our low-voltage instructor can now give more. Their low voltage is part of their uh, four-year electrical training, but now they have access to some of the equipment and the uh, resources we use in low voltage right next to their shop. So that's an improvement in, in its location. So that helped us in that. And then what that did was open up a place for a, a classroom. Um, and so, you know, this it's not a huge classroom, I mean, because of the way it's configured. Uh, but what we'll do is, as we schedule next year, it's actually an extra classroom, but uh, we'll look at, when we schedule, what sections best fit that size classroom based on the uh, teacher-student ratio. Susan's looking at me. <laughs> we looked at, we did a tour today about that space. That that's small. It is small, a little smaller than an average classroom, but it, uh, I look at it, there are, we have some classes that are like 12 or 14 students, particularly in certain areas, and that would fit for that. So we, based on how we schedule our kids, that might work, I think it, it can work in one of our classrooms. So that's one of, the that's one of our new classrooms uh, for next year. Um, so now, so then uh, we got aviation going in here, that's the, just the freshman program until we get the new building built. Then they'll move out of that and that becomes available space for other things, uh, which won't be next year, but the year after. So then we have here, which I think is awesome, we got three brand new classrooms, one, two, three. And we made those classrooms, this space here, here was all of carpentry 11th, 12th grade, but none of this space was being utilized because it was full of equipment, stuff, some stuff we threw out, it was, it was unusable. There was just so much, there was equipment, there was tools, there was all that kind of stuff in there that made it uh, unusable. So they were always only using this section of the shop. And so for ABA, so what we decided was, let's clean this out. And we ended up, we have a, we had in here a little paint shop. We took the, it was basically a, a wall in a cage. We took that down, that's already down. So now we have this space here for two classrooms. <coughs> then we have a wall over here right now that we're gonna take down. Uh, we're gonna do an April vacation. We're gonna try to do an April vacation. Um, by taking that wall down and putting a wall here, I get my, my another classroom. These classrooms are 25 feet by 25 feet, which is about the size of an average, an average classroom, not a large classroom, but an average classroom, I would say that can hold 20 students um, comfortably. So um, that's gonna give us
us another, that gives us our three classrooms here. So one of these classrooms will be off of here, and these two classrooms, because they're adjacent to a shop, we're gonna turn these into related theory classrooms. So right now, this classroom here is a carpentry-related classroom. We're gonna move them into classroom two. And then, and then this can be a, I think that would be a great English classroom uh, right there. So that's one class, that can be a classroom. And so then this classroom here, we can take, uh, we we're going to take, who's related room? There was a related room, we're going to move into there. Oh, horticulture's related room here, we're going to move into here and make that another classroom. So then that gives us another classroom in, in its place. And then here's classroom four. If you look at classroom floor, four, right now what we have here is a closet full of file cabinets in this space over here what we have is a, uh, a academy supervisor's office. And we're gonna move that office space over to here, so his office will be over here, and that gives us a classroom space of 19 feet by 27 feet, which is a little smaller than average, but pretty decent size still. Okay. I, you know, and I'm sure it's 19 by 25. I have good memory for numbers and measurements because I'm a carpenter. <laughs> so in any case. Excuse me, John, uh, Frank? John, um, how many students are you expecting to move into these classrooms? How many? Yeah. Well, the average classroom is about 20 students. So these classrooms will easily hold 20 students. This will hold 20 students as well. Are these uh, academic, um, academic classrooms? classrooms. Yep. But we're actually going to put the related theories in here because they're adjacent to the shop and put all the classrooms on the main hallways on the outside because it's more convenient for students, the academic students. To stay within the confines of the of the regular uh, hallways. <laughs> What's that? I'm going to use a tour to see what area looks like. <laughs> we can take a tour down there anytime you want. If you want to come in someday, I'd happy be happy to take you a tour, give you a tour of that space. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Mrs. Mrs. Fitzgerald. Yes. Um, where I see where the um, landscaping is because we have a greenhouse, yes. but then you have a really large space that <coughs> says future landscaping. Um, where is that going to be in the middle of the parking lot? No, no it's not in the middle of the parking lot, actually. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you know where the greenhouse is, right? Yes, I do. You look to the right of the greenhouse and look at this space here. Yeah. They have concrete blocks, they have pavers, they have all kinds of masonry material that actually take up this space, right? Yeah. We move that material down by where the barn is, down, yeah, yeah. down lower, and then that, that will allow us to put a building up here, which we want to put a metal building in here because it'll be- that, That's what I'm asking, like what is that space? <laughs> that space really is what, what's in there is their materials, all kinds of masonry material right now. So we're going to move that material which will allow us. Now here's the other thing I, I did want to say is that, as you know, when you come down this, this side of the school yeah. and you take a left and you come through here, when we repave, we're eliminating this as a drive through so that cars will no longer take a left here. They'll take a left outside of here and come around. That way we can utilize this for learning space. Okay, so anybody that has driven behind the school from five o'clock on, pretty much Monday through Thursday, is uh, there's at least 50 pickup trucks out there for all of, and that's the space where they park. Not this, this is not a park. They don't park no, but here. they drive through there, yeah. and then right as the entrance to the school, going up the stairs to the cafeteria, that's where all of those, um, Park, yeah, you're absolutely right. Okay. And they still can get there. So we're still going to, that will be paved oh, yeah. parking. Yes. So, because yes. if we give up any more parking spaces, so we're, we're really up, in trouble. We're giving up any parking spaces by taking all this. There's none of that parking space. Okay. That's all drive through. Oh, I'm believing you, John. <laughs> well, there's a little I think bit of parking. There's a little bit of parking here, but we don't allow anybody to park. Right. I know that. Yeah. Right. But there's no real parking spots here. There, there are okay. some over here. Except for all the pickup trucks. I will. No, I don't mean to point at you. Actually, yes. wait. That's where all our buses park. Yes. Uh, they don't yeah. park there. No. 
just the pickup trucks. Okay, just no, all the pick up nothing parks here. No, no, no. Go back to yes. Back here. No, no, no. no. Right there. there, where the no. Move it down. Truck. Yeah, right in. Yeah, that's that's no, nobody parks there. No, it's that's right inside. next to carpentry. Nobody parks in there. Okay. There's so, a lawn there. There's a lawn. All right. No, I. So I'm obviously seeing it differently. Were you right there on that? Show me where the corner is that's by metal fabrication. Oh, that's, oh, that's up there. That's a okay. 72 building. All right. Okay. That's a 72 all right. Building. All right. All right. Yeah, we're not seeing that on this drawing. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So, um, so I, I will say this: that where this all this masonry stuff is, at one time was part of the parking lot, but it has not been for the last three or four years. So we did lose some spots there originally, but we are going to make up some spots because we're going to get rid of the meridian, so we're going to pick up a lot of spots that way. We're also where the tennis courts are, where we haven't had any parking for the last seven years because we've been using it for the field construction. Yeah. That's all cleaned out, so there's space there. And we're going to take some of the field, some more of the unpaved area there, and turn that into parking spaces as well. So we will, when the uh, paving job is done, we'll have more parking space, probably about 50 more spaces than we have today to help address some of the parking issues. So, yep. Um, I think, okay, that's one, uh, that's, uh, I'll show you, so you've got aviation, the new program, that's one of the new programs, and then we've got all the classroom, we're hiring four new teachers, so we have five new spaces for four new teachers, <laughs> so we're good. Okay, <laughs> move on to the mezzanine next, now. Next, next drawing, all right, so here's. This is the mezzanine, which is up on the third floor. Oh, yeah. uh, and if you look, if you go up there, there's two sets of stairways, one on the right and one on the left. So the one on, am I looking at this correctly? Make sure I'm looking at this print correctly. Uh, yeah, okay, so this is actually the stair, the stair, if you were coming from here towards the um, uh, auditorium, this is actually the first stairway you come to, because we're looking at it from this side down. So you come in this way here, and when you come in, this is going to be we're going to this is going to be grade ten uh, programming, grade nine, and grade twelve. Excuse me, John. You said this is the third floor. Yeah. This is yeah. the third floor. Is yeah. Mezzanine. Mezzanine. Only one it's called the mezzanine. The mezzanine. It's called the mezzanine. It's the mezzanine. It's the third floor. It's right it's, across it's the, the third floor. From, yeah. uh, from the auditorium. If you're going up the ramp, take a right, and then on your left is the auditorium. On the right, there's a stairway that leads up to the third floor here. So you've probably never been up there. Don't don't feel bad. People have been here 40 years and never been there. Okay. Yes, uh, Mrs. Fitzgerald. Before we start, is uh, what do you mean before we start? I meant before we start the mezzanine. <laughs> um, is this the space we just redid for our IT people? Mm -hmm. Oi, volts. Okay. So, um, so 10, 9, 11, and 12. So most, a lot of the work that we did ended up over here. If you look right in here, what we did, we pulled all, all, all brand new uh, cable, fiberglass cable, over to here for a new backup server in here, and that's going to remain. So all that work wasn't for naught. And so we're doing that's all still here. We put a, a door here. That server's in here. So we will still be utilizing, you know, the equipment that we targeted for that space up there. So it wasn't for, for not for waste. So it was, and it's something that we needed as backup. So that's where our backup server is going. We all the wiring's pulled. We have the servers and all the equipment to put in place, which we'll do this summer. Um, so we're ready. To all, what we need for that. The only other thing we have to do is have its own air conditioning. Mm -hmm. So we got to put a unit up on the roof for that. Excuse me, John, a second. Uh, Mr. Cirillo? Yeah. Thank you, Leo, for you. Um, and I think I just answered my question. I believe this is where the um, programming Yeah, this is where shop programming. Is These are all programming. That's going to be the programming department up there. <coughs> I, I, I'm not going to look this side of the room anymore. Mrs. Fitzgerald? Yes. Yeah, sure. The dollar signs 
are flying through my head. So I didn't know if part of the program it was if we had a press up there where we were printing. Is all of this in that budget? This is almost all done. Yeah. Okay. No, I meant this whole thing. This whole thing is almost all done. No, this whole thing. This whole thing. The one I just showed you. Yeah. Do we have the money to do this? It's almost all done. That what I just showed you. Oh. Okay. There's minimal amount of money for all of that. Okay. Yeah. We have to put up some. You want to put that up the slide back up, Jason? I need him to do my budget. I'll show you. So, this is all wide open now, except for there's a wall here. It's a block wall, which we will take. We can take down this April vacation. We have our block block knockdown wall man that comes in every vacation and knocks down the wall. And uh, he's coming in. That's Sean. You know Sean Bedford? Every time we have a wall to take it down, he comes in and he knocks it down for us. So he's going to come in and take that wall down for us. So it will cost us whatever we pay him for three days of work. And then these walls here, our carpenter on staff will build these walls and put these walls up. Mark, who does all that, he's already built about three walls in the last two weeks. So he'll come in and put all this up, so it'll just be the material of about $2,500 to $3,000. And then we'll have, then there's some electrical work and some safety stuff to put in everything and all of that. And our in-house electrician and the gentleman that, our retiree, uh, Charlie, uh, who retired last year from electrical, has been helping us out coming in and doing, and we pay him by the hour. He's been with us since last summer doing all our electrical work, so he'll come in and do that. So it's all very minimal cost, and we have money that we're trying to utilize that we have to spend in ESSER, that, and that's the money we're using for a lot of this stuff. So that'll all get done. That'll take care of all that. This room already exists. This room is just taking another wall down, and then that exists. Of course, you know, painting, we have a painter that's on board that's been doing all this painting for us. So we've been, we're well on our, like this all has to be done by the middle of May, because it's the Department of Ed's coming in to inspect it. So all that, all of that work will be done. It's not, the biggest job of all, on this print really is cafeteria. the cafeteria, is where the, most of the work's gonna be, because we have to meet all the guidelines for a cafeteria, so. And the uh, architect is doing the drawing for us to ensure that we include everything that we have to to meet state regulations and, and uh, the town of Andover codes. Superintendent, uh, is that going to be a full function calf, or is it going to be uh, the food going to be prepared upstairs or brought full down? Function with full function, uh, walk-in oh. refrigerator and freezer, and, and its own staff. Well, totally own staff. So we'll have to split up some. We may have to add additional staff. Well, but of course. The, but the cafeteria budget is separate from our from our operational budget, so it should sustain itself in terms of costs. Um, right now, we have quite a few dollars in our cafeteria budget, um, which we're going to utilize. The money we have in our cafeteria budget right now which is quite substantial to do this most of this project. So we we have the funds to do that. Okay. Okay, back to the mezzanine. So the mezzanine, so the mezzanine really, we've built this wall. This wall is built. We've t uh, kind of, we're cleaning out. The biggest problem now is we're trying to find storage space for a lot of the, we've got some equipment that we bought to do this new TVs and other things this summer. So we're looking, we've got to find a space to put some of that stuff. Some of it, we put it over here. So if we finish, we clean that out, we can put this wall up and this wall up. And then uh, the electricians, Electricians are up there now doing the electrical work uh, to get that project ready. And uh, we've got a IT is going to do the IT. I already talked to Jason. He said it was an easy job. <laughs> Mr. Cirillo? And all this has to be done by, John, all this has to be done by May yes. before this, the May Department of Ed comes in? This, just this side, has, this has to be done by May 15th because that's the one classroom, the uh, ninth grade classroom that has to be ready. So that is our main focus. These will be framed and everything, but we won't have, Thank you. Uh, you know, walk-in ready. But this will be. Where we got to have our TV, our alarm system. Our, we got to put in. Uh, we have a sprinkler system already, but we have to move a couple of heads. So we have to bring a, a, a sprinkler 
a company and to do that, a, a pipe fitter to do that work. Um, but it's all been scheduled and it's all ready to go. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, I think we have one more drawing. Yep. The next one, please. It's not listed. What is it? It's uh, so this one here is what we got uh, the capital skills money. Uh, we got a grant to do this, these projects here. We are revisiting these projects. Um, one is the addition that's behind carpentry, uh, behind carpentry over here, and the other one behind the old carpentry shop. This is the freshman shop. Um, so I think at this point we're looking at not doing this project here because I think we've, we won't need the space. And in lieu of that, we want to take the funds uh, and build that future landscape shop. But until we get the numbers, until I have the finished drawing and we have firm numbers, my, my feeling is that um, we don't have to do this space here. We're fi still finalizing that because we'll have four, between first floor and second floor, we'll have four new classroom spaces on that addition. Plus we're gonna have some classroom space on the next drawing I can show you. But this was supposed to be um, another section of building we we're gonna put on. But I really believe we, we won't have to put that section on. Um, we had a total of $7 million to do these, to build the frame, put up the frame for this, this building, this building, and the one that's going against the uh, gym, which is, a, is the next drawing. Mr. Cirillo? Yeah. Uh, John, quick question. And, and I know we're going to be putting the programming on the, on the other side of the building. Are we ever going to plan to keep that program and IT cl in close vicinity to each other? Would there so much related to each other? IT? Yeah. Uh, we couldn't. I don't think it's necessary because they're, they're really programming is, um, I don't think they have to be side by side. There's no reason why if we had to, if we wanted to bring them and have them do, look at doing some hardware projects and stuff, we could bring them down to IT, schedule some time uh, down in IT. But there's no reason why we can't look in the future. I hate to start making more changes like two years from now, but I think putting program there was a long term solution. Uh, we weren't looking to have to move them again um, because I think we can uh, move kids down if we had to. A lot, e even a lot of the hardware uh, knowledge that they need in programming, we can bring instructors, IT instructors up there, up to this uh, programming space and have them take the computer apart and do some other technical. And if we have to buy some uh, uh, small equipment or tools for that, there's no reason why we can't do that. But we can make it, we can adapt that. I feel comfortable about that. Mm. Further? Okay, can continue, John, please. And the, uh, I'm gonna call this the gold nugget of the whole project right here, <laughs> is the uh, aviation space right here. So this is a building that's going up against <coughs> the uh, gym space. So this is where we're going to uh, this is a 40-foot garage door right here that opens, or is it 40 or 30? I think it's 40-foot. A garage door here that opens in one piece to be able to drive airplanes in here where we'll train the kids to repair and work on airplanes right here. And then there are possible classrooms all around here. I don't think we need two classrooms. So we got a math classroom here, a math classroom, and this can be another classroom as well here, and this can be the related theory for the aviation program. So we're also expanding our garages out there, which you haven't seen yet. There's, we're adding on to those garages out there uh, that we're gonna make large enough and put a large door in front so we can park the airplanes we have under, under a garage. And then we can drive them over here when we need to, when we need to work, when we want the kids to work on them so they have space. So that's the future. So this building here is going to be partially masonry and partially metal. So in order to save costs, we're going to have um, the first six feet will be um, brick to match.
matches our building, and the upper part will be metal that uh, is aesthetically attractive to meet the rest of the building. Um, I want to make it look, I want to let it look ugly. We'll definitely make it look uh, that belongs there. But we're also uh, we're going to try to do it so that we can brick veneer it someday if we decide we want to brick veneer it, um, if we don't want it to stay metal. But I think that the metal will look fine. I, I really do. I, um, I think it will be fine. And it will save us an enormous amount of money going with the metal building on that part of it, which works great for a hangar space to teach airplane uh, space. And that will help us conserve some money. So um, I think we'll be all right. Good. Anything further? Any further questions? Yeah, Bill? Uh, Mr. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So, John, aviation, will that be um, grades 9 through 12? Yes. Exploratory? Yes. And how many students do you project would enter that program? Well, um, somewhere when the program is totally fully full, somewhere between I'm suspecting around 60 students. 60? Six. Okay. Right now I'm thinking 15 students per grade level until mm -hmm. uh, we know what the market will bear and the success of the program. We won't, we're not, I don't intend to bring in, you know, it may be, we might have 100 kids that want first choice next year. Right. Uh, so if that happens, then maybe we would consider doing 20 students for the first year. But uh, I think we would probably want to hold it at 15 until we can get a handle on the curriculum. Okay. But I'm really surprised we've had four applicants already who posted for that and some really impressive applications already uh, uh, for that position. You said f how many applicants? As four. F students or teachers? No, 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 four app uh, teachers instructors. Okay. We posted it and we have four teachers apply. <laughs> <coughs> Anything further? Anything further, John? No. Got another building hidden there somewhere? No? <laughs> Where's the casino going? Okay. Okay. Um, when you get settled, John, emergency response and safety protocols? Well, I just included in... I just, in, I just included in a packet a... Um, Safety protocol, our safety uh, emergency response and safety protocols that we have. Uh, we talked about it at our last meeting, if, I re if, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So I thought I would uh, provide you with to to take a look at. And uh, next meeting, if uh, be open to taking any feedback after you get a chance to look at it and respond to uh, the document itself. Um, give you some time to look at that. So I thought it's important for you to have a chance to review it. So I asked Susan to put it in the packet. Any questions on it? Well, you, nothing. Okay, yeah, well, yes, oh, I'm sorry, Zola. sorry, sorry. Uh, I do have a question already. Um, we were talking about uh, medical emergency. So within this packet, that you put together, that you gave us, um, it does has a page that says medical emergency. So it's kind of explaining, um, you know, what to do in a case of um, a person ill. And um, you know, it's very vague in the sense of it just only has this sentence. So my question is, and it's, it's going to go back to the same question I asked before, because this, um, the original question was, do we have a first aid? Um, what did you say? Response um, team. <laughs> first aid responder, because I was saying team, but responders. Responders. So within this, and I know we can wait until the next meeting to answer all the questions. But I do, um, I do want to know if the people, like in, in here, it says very specific that if a person has an emergency, just call the nurse, um, stay calm, stay, I mean, state the name, um, give the locations, describe the nature, and stay with the person. Um, 
I think I'm looking for a little more of, you know, what happened to give help to that person. But anyways, um, what I want to see is when we understand this, that we do have people that are certified that are going to be uh, responding to an emergency um, until the professionals arrive. They need to be certified for, for definitely because then the person can be um, held accountable for in a court because if they don't have the right certification up to date um, and the person happens to die, that will be a big problem. So I just want to make sure that we are covering that, okay? Okay, thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Uh, thank you. Follow up to that, and almost districts have staff is um, certified um, in CPR. Are most of our staff here certified in CPR? I would not say most, but we do have staff that are certified in CPR, um, and um, so I can I can get you a, a not so much a list of names, but I can tell you a number. I can give you a number of how many staff members are certified in CPR. Years ago, we used to have a program where teachers could uh, take a CPR course. I think we still offer a course. One of our teachers offers a, a program. Uh, I don't know if it's once a month or is it one of our um, phys ed teachers does a program where people can get certified. But its certificates are certified in CPR. Um, I know you want to relook at that and see how many staff might be interested. Actually, I think I mean I think that's a good uh, recommendation for us to take a uh, to possibly um, encourage uh, more staff to get CPR certified um, and run whatever programming we need if we and see how many st staff we can get certified. Sue might have a little more update on exactly this, how many are. Principal Golosky? I just wanted to share that it has been recommended that we offer something to all of our staff as optional at the beginning of our, our two and a half day. Um, it's actually in, on my board. Um, it was recommended and I'm working with Mike Nelson because we do have someone in house, I believe that trains the coaches. And so we are, we do have plans to open it up to offer something here on site just to increase the number of our staff that are certified. Mrs. Fitzgerald? Excuse me. I know that we're all going to be looking at this, and I've read most of it, but you, you can't cover all situations all the time. I'll use it as an example, and Sue might or might not know what happened. We had an ambulance pull in here about an hour ago. Um, go someplace they didn't go down the pool I but so we had an emergency here and the ambulance left I don't know if a person was in the ambulance or not so we have daytime situations we have nighttime situations but you can't be a hundred percent of the time in preparedness in that we have the town of Andover true emergency response team within our building during the school day and I believe do we have a nurse on duty at our after doc program no so we have nurses certified RNs in this building during the day for our students so they are in my mind, our first response is I used to train every single CPR person in this building, coaches, any teachers that wanted it, but it's impossible to ask every person to take on that responsibility. Some people would not look at it as part of their job. They'd be too afraid even to do it. So I just think that reading this and the different components of it is one heck of a great beginning and certainly there's always a way to fix something up but to have that say a hundred percent time that you're going to have that RN or whatever there it, it just can't be no, unless you're in a okay. uh, Frank 
and I agree with you, Marilyn, there's never going to be anything, any plan that's going to be 100%. Um, but sometimes the matter of saving a life is a matter of seconds. And it's about offering people, um, staff don't have to say, yes, we will take the CPR. But if, if we're offering it, people take it on, it's a, it's a great plus to us. Um, it's just to offer it to make sure that our staff are, are, are prepared because you never know what a situation is. And if somebody jumps in to try to do CPR and is not certified, yeah, it could be a problem. Okay. John, did you have so, you, nothing to add? That's fine if you don't. Um, I think Susan covered it, but I think uh, trying uh, as we move forward to encourage more staff members and make it uh, them aware of what the uh, opportunities are to get certified in CPR. We do have someone on staff that does training and actually has done, uh, I asked uh, that person to do training for our three new uh, early childhood teachers and was willing to do it. So she'll do special training if we ask her to. So we'll look at trying to increase the amount of staff members who are certified in CPR. Frank? And actually, I want to thank you, John, because I was the one who requested this information at the last meeting, um, as well as making sure that we upgrading our protocol um, for different emergencies. At this time, anything further? This time, the chair accepts a motion to move this to tabled matters, emergency response safety protocols. I have a second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Make sure that gets put into the table matters, please. Thank you. Okay, report for committees. I see none. Old business, district committee priorities, policies. Yes, this is the show. Just on the old business, I was wondering if we had an up to date count on how many participants we had in our oral, early childhood daycare program. <coughs> Sue, John, John, Sue, Sue, yeah. John. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm not sure how many we have right now, but I can get that number for you and email it. Yeah. Okay. Maybe Sue, Sue might know. Moving. I can't speak to a particular number, but I know that um, if you watch the play yard every day, there's a little bit, a few more um, little Reggies out there. Um, but I know that their enrollments have been increasing. In the middle of the uh, courtyard. I think it's called a courtyard. I don't know what it's called. Playground, I guess. Yeah. Anything further? Okay, moving on. Uh, no tabled matters at this time. Personnel considerations, resignation, leave of absence, retirements, and appointments. <clears throat> this time, the chair will be looking for a motion to adjust the. Well, I'm sorry. Yep, sure. Oh, new, you want new business? Uh, okay. Sure. Talk about it, yes, because ID asked for three um, things on new business last meeting. Okay. And at this point, I don't feel they were all addressed. So I need to put it back on the agenda. Okay. Exiting interview review. I didn't hear anything about that. Exit interview, John. Um, now, we did talk about the explanation of um, the students um, not performing. So I got some of that. Um, I still would like to see the process that we, you know, you mentioned, uh, John, a um, great committee. So maybe just looking an overview of that. that sure. The work they've done. Yeah. Yep. You know, has been done, what the steps are. Yep. That will take care of that. And then also the protocol for emergency, which I just learned that Mr. Cirillo asked for, um, and that's what you brought. You didn't bring anything. Um, in terms of the emergency that I asked for. So now, you know, I know I mentioned something of that emergency protocol in terms of if something happened in the building, but I was very specific talking about if something happened to a person that it gets sick. So in, in, in the Seeing that I didn't get that, so I'll, I'll, I'd like to put that back because I want to talk about specifically when somebody gets sick. And I understand uh, Madrin's explanation, which I appreciate. I still don't, I don't <coughs> agree with, with that, that 
No, I mean, yeah, we cannot be 100% everywhere when somebody ha happened to get sick or, you know, have an emergency, a uh, uh, health emergency, but we need to be prepared at all times of the, uh, of the day because we do have people here, we have night classes, we have um, the school full of people during the day. We need to have a very strong protocol for people that get um, into a emergency situation um, before the ambulance the ambulance get here, and it, as I said before, we that those people need to be certified in order to give help before the professional gets here and take over. So that's that's what I'm looking for. Put that into your report, John. Yeah. You have it. You have it clearly. Uh, yes, I have it. So in terms of the exit interview, HR is putting together. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, in terms of the uh, exit interview, H our HR director is working on a, uh, a list of comments that have been made over the last five years uh, from our exit interviews. And so uh, when she completes that work, I'll, I'll bring it to, she should probably have it ready for the next school committee meeting, but she, I asked her to put that together for us. So she's working on that. And then um, in terms of, um, I can give you a report, a more detailed report on the work that's happened so far with the grading committee and some of the direction they're going in. Um, and then the, uh, you know, talking, looking at our uh, emergency protocols and talking more about our medical uh, emergency protocols. I recall a couple of years ago, we submitted a document to the Department of Education. They request, requested medical emergency protocols for the school. And I will research, get a copy of that, and get a copy of that to you. Maybe that has in it more specific what you're looking for. I forgot we even had that document until today. So I'll, I'll look for that. And uh, I'll get that to you. We'll put that in the next packet. Yep. OK. Uh, back down to uh, job postings. At this time, the chair will appreciate a motion to adjust the agenda to executive sessions for the purpose of collective bargaining and possible discipline. For a motion on that, please. Uh, discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Would you call the roll? Would you have a moment, please? Yeah, we do. But I just we're just an agenda to go into okay. executive session. Mr. Cirillo? Yes. Ms. Marmel? Yes. Mr. Tarbox? We're going to executive session. Oh. I guess okay is kind of okay is kind of yes. <laughs> Ms. Fitzgerald? Okay is kind of yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. Ms. Disliff? Yes. Mr. Hatem? Yes. Mr. Lamontagne? Yes. We will be coming back to the regular order of business and completing the, the full agenda. Oh. <laughs> Ditto. <laughs>
way earlier. In fact, I was sleeping a lot better after March 1st this year. <laughs> Okay, going to uh, the job postings, uh, superintendents, uh, through the first floor, please. English instructor. Uh, let's see. English uh, instructor per local 1707. History instructor per local 1707 contract. Math instructor per local 1707 contract and biology instructor per 1707 contract. These are all new positions uh, in order to uh, cover the increase in student population uh, for the freshmen coming in this year. Okay, Chair, we accept the motion. Second. Discussion? All, all those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Continue, Superintendent. Do the next four, please. So this is a cafeteria, cafeteria monitor will assist the school personnel in providing supervision for the cafeteria based on the new cafeteria contract. Um, this is a new position, and um, this person that uh, is actually um, moving from uh, original front desk over to this position because we now have security at the front desk. So, um, and the salary is covered in the cafeteria's uh, budget. Dental assistant? Dental no assistant instructor per local 1707 contract. This is a new position uh, to cover the uh, um, <laughs> to cover that fourth instructor that they've been looking for the last few years because of the expansion of uh, curriculum and uh, the work, uh, them having to do uh, outside, um, what we call it, clinicals uh, out at the uh, dentist offices. English learner. And English learners ELL instructor uh, for 2022 per teacher contract. This is a replacement position. Uh, Long-term substitute in biology from May to June 2023. Hey, Chair, accept the motion. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay, John, lead teacher. Lead teacher, department liaison, local 1707 uh, for the next school year. This is an annual position. These are for all the new lead, uh, to rehire our lead teachers for next year. CPT facilitators, uh, local 17 contract, 15 career area teachers, 17 academic teachers, one guidance counselor, one CPT facilitator. This is an annual position that we hire for for next school year at this time every year. Advisory monitors per local 1707 contract for school year 2023-24. This is also an annual position which we appoint uh, that we hire at this time of the year as well. Instructors for adult training. Uh, this is, gets into the night stuff, so. Oh, okay. Let's uh, chair accept the motion. Someone Discussion? Aye. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? The night school, John? So, adult learning, I mean. Uh, instructor for adult training summer courses in electrical, automotive, plumbing, and HVAC to, to be supported by JLTS contract with the Commonwealth Corporation for career technical education training. This is annual positions. Uh, instructor for adult training and advanced manufacturing to be supported through a contract with the Northeast Advanced Manufacturing Consortium through Mass Hire North Shore Workforce Board annual position. Math instructor for adult training and advanced manufacturing to be supported through a contract with Northeast Advanced Manufacturing Consortium through Mass Hire North Shore Workforce Board annual position. Chair, accept the motion. Discussion? All those in favor? You want to pause? And then we okay. have three additional positions last minute for the three shops that we talked about earlier where we need to add another instructor, a medical assistant instructor, uh, automotive t uh, technology instructor, and a plumbing instructor per the uh, uh, teacher contract. These are all new positions. Uh, I'm here seeing OSHA 10 instructor. Uh, Oh, I don't have that. Uh, I don't have it 
on mine. I don't have it on mine. Yeah, I have it. It's okay. You want to read that one, Susan? Yes. Thank you. OSHA 10 instruction for advanced manufacturing training to be supported through a contract with Northeast Advanced Manufacturing Consortium through Mass Hire North Shore Workforce Board annual position. Okay, Chair, I'll accept the motion. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone opposed? Future agenda items. Workshop for April 25th, 530, strategic plan. John? So this is a... Uh, oh, I'm sorry, hold on. We Oh, the, oh, yeah, the ones we had. The uh, medical assistant instructor, the automotive teacher instructor, and the plumbing instructor to fill Don't those positions for, for expanding those particular programs. Okay, thought I asked for a motion. Okay, do I have a motion on those, please? Second. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay, future agenda items. Workshop April 25th at 530, strategic plan. John? So this is a workshop that I was going to do with the school committee to get your input on uh, the strategic plan. So I thought we could spend a half hour uh, going over uh, particularly the uh, leadership uh, focus group on the leadership to get the uh, school committee's uh, input. I will uh, send you some document, a uh, little bit of more information in your ne next packet to better prepare you for that uh, workshop. It's really to get more input uh, in terms of policy and some of the work that we should be doing moving forward. So, Frank, the, the 25th. 25th, our next school committee meeting. Okay. Yep. Anything further? If there's no further business, the chair will accept the motion to adjourn. So All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? <laughs> you, wake, you, you finally woke up, Marilyn, huh?